Hello friends, so today we can discuss the problem C1 from the latest Code Forces round 672 problem name Pokemon Army. So this is the easy version of the problem and there's also a hard version of this problem. So I hope I will make the video on both of them. This is the, this is the first problem in which you are given that like you can read the problem statement. It is a story, but I will tell you in a straightforward way. So there are N Pikachu's and the strength of the ith pickup like Pokemon is equal to AI. So like you are given some like N Pokemons and the strength of the ith Pokemon is AI and all of these numbers are just distinct. Okay. Now you have to make some army, but like if you want to make some army, Andrew can choose any non empty subsequence of the Pokemon. So like you can choose any, like any, uh, subsequence of the Pokemon you are given. In other words, Andrew can choose any like some array B from indices K such that this happened, which means that you have to choose some K indices, which are between one and N. Like you have to choose some K increasing indices from one till N such that no two indices are like consecutive. Also, and this army will consist of the Pokemon just because if you have chosen the indices B1, B2, B3, so the, uh, the Pokemon which will choose is A of B1, A of B2, because these are the indices. And the strength of the whole army which you have is equal to like because you have chosen these indices b1 b2 b3 if you put all these pokemons which you have chosen from the order you have taken out from the array then the first is positive then the second strength is negative the third strength is positive so like it is like a hill valley type of thing so this is if you do an addition of all of these values and a subtraction of all those like the even values so this, that's the whole strength of the army so now because uh, in this question what you can do uh, you are given q equal to 0 in which you cannot swap anything so let's let's leave out leave out this so now you are actually given some pokemons and their powers and you have to choose k pokemons out of these uh, okay such that if you choose out these pokemons what you will actually have to do such that you get out the maximum strength of the army okay because k is not given you can decide whatever k you want so like you have to choose out the maximum possible pokemons out of this so like you are given some array and you have to take out some amount of pokemons or like some amount of pokemon such that if you take out from the last example 5 3 and 7 so like you are taking out these pokemons so now if you are again arrange them in a row the first pokemon strength is you have to take it positive the second is negative the third is positive and so on so it's like an halley like sorry a uh, peak and a valley and so on so if you draw this out the main thing of this question is just drawing it out if you just draw it out this question is very simple i'll tell you why uh, okay so just take some number line let's assume the first number is like let's assume that one this is one then the next number is two next number is like five and then it's four it's smaller then it's like three again smaller then it is more which is uh, okay six and then seven it's like this and what are the numbers you have chosen you have chosen five three and seven so you have chosen this five you have chosen this 3 and you have just chosen this 7 so as you can see like this is just of a form of a peak and valley and you are choosing out the peak and the valley okay but let's assume that in the start you have this thing you have some valley and then you have some peak so you do not choose a valley at the start because the first value is negative as you can see the first you first have to take some positive value then a negative value and the positive value is negative value so you want that all the peaks should be positive and all the value should be negative because this is the smallest value then like this is a local minima then then the local box like the maximum value local minima and so on so you want that all the local maximas or the peak value should be positive and all the local minima should be negative but if because you have to start if you want this condition you have to start with the peak value you cannot start with start with a like a value value because if you start with the value then the value become positive and the peak become negative i hope you get my point so you have to find out the first peak and then from that you have to find out the next valley then the peak and so on so now because then you have to send that okay how should i code this problem now the code part is a little bit tricky but you have to think that okay if I start from the first position from my array, 
I have to keep on moving such that my next element is greater because all the elements are distinct. Okay, if my next element is greater, I will keep on moving. So in this given example, my first point is one. I will keep on moving to the two, like one, uh, like from one till two, then two to five, because now from the five the next element is smaller, which means I have reached some valley or sorry, sorry peak because peak is my all the two elements which is left or right they both are smaller and the this element is bigger. So because I am coming up the hill, which is like one, two, five, and then the next element is down. So it means that my five point is the peak. So now what you can do, you can make some variable, which is like I have used some variable flip, which will tell us that okay, now I have found out a peak. Now I should find out the valley, which means that now I am increasing on the slope. I I am checking that okay, my next element is greater. Go on increasing because my next element is greater. I should. Move further, such that I should find out a larger peak. But now, when I find out a peak, which means that my left and the right value are smaller, I have found out a peak. I will flip out my value. I flip out like my first value flip is zero. Then then I flip equal to one. What this means? Now I find out a peak. I should find out a valley. How should I find out a valley? Now, when I am iterating over the array, I should keep on moving from the left to right, such that now, if my next value, which is like this i value. It is smaller than the previous value, then it's fine. As you can see, now I am checking that this three is smaller than the four value. Okay, fine. Now six, six is greater than three, which means that okay, both of these values are greater than three. So, which means that okay, now my flip is equal to one. So I have I have found out that okay, this is the last value and this is the peak value or like the valley value. I should take it out. So I I have taken this value only. And now I will again flip out my value to zero, which means that now I am finding out a peak. But now, because I am on three, I will keep on increasing. Like okay, six is greater, seven is greater. But now, I haven't reached any further value which is decreasing or tells that this is a peak. I have come out of the loop. So, which means that if my final flip value is equal to zero, and I have come out of this loop, which means that okay, I I must be finding out another peak value, and I must have not find out a peak value. So, if my flip value is zero. Then I should also take this last value also, which means that also I am going up the hill. I am finding out my next peak, but because I am not finding out the next peak because my elements are smaller, my number of Pokemon are smaller. But the current element on which I am is increasing, and because I am finding out a hill or a peak value, and this value will also add up to my final answer. This is not a negative value. It will it will add up to my final answer. So I should also incorporate this in my answer. So this is also very important point. So there are two points: how you will flip your points, how you will flip to ch check that okay, now I am finding out a peak or now like whether I am finding out a valley. And now if I am finding out a valley, I should find out the next peak. And now if I if I find out a valley, and now if I keep on going and I and my flip value is equal to zero, and if I terminate out of out of this loop, let's assume that uh, this is like this. Which means that if I go from left to right, I reach or find it out a peak, then I change my flip value to one. Then when I move from left to right and I reach this point and I come out of this loop, my flip value is equal to one. Which means that I am finding out a valley. And even if I find out that okay, this is a valley point of thing, this is a like smaller value, I should not incorporate it because my value of valley is negative. It will only decrease my total strength. So I should not incorporate it. But if my flip value is equal to zero. Which means that okay, I am finding out a like a peak, and I should incorporate this peak because whatever is the last value, it will only add up to my final answer, and that's the whole trick for this question. I'll take down to the code part now. So what you will do? Take the input of n and q, okay, and all the numbers. Current value is the starting value from which we'll start, okay. So actually, and total is the actually the total number. Uh, the total will store out how many, like what is the total of the strength, the total strength, and flip will tell out whether I am finding out a peak or whether I am finding out like finding out a valley. So zero means that I am finding out a peak, and zero, like one means I am finding out a valley. Okay, so I start out from a second element because the first element is always there, and then like if my element is keep on increasing, because I have to check it with the previous element. That's why I am not starting at the first element. I am starting from the second element, and I will check with the previous element whether this is increasing. Then I will keep on going. Whether this is decreasing, which means that okay, my previous element is also smaller, and my next element is also smaller, which means this is the peak point. 
but because I am on the ith point, my peak is on the i minus one point because I am always checking my i point with the i minus one point. So which means if my ith point is smaller than my i minus minus one point, which means that okay, my previous point is the peak. So I will check that okay, if the previous point is my peak, what will I do? I will add that peak to the value. I will flip out my position because my initial flip is zero. I will make my flip equal to one, and then like this is some current value. You can take this or not. It's up to you. I'll just make like if I take this just to make my thing clear. Okay, and then uh, thing is I will move from this and I will check only when my flip value is zero. Then only I will get into this loop. When my flip value turns out to be one, then I will start going to this loop or this else condition because now I am finding out a value. If I'm finding out a value, if my like the current value is smaller than the previous value, which means I'm decreasing down the hill, then it is fine. I'm just continue going out. Else, if my current value is greater than the previous value, which means that okay, now I have found out a value, so I should subtract this value from my total because this is the smallest possible value. I should subtract out the smallest possible value, like value value from my total, and I've subtracted out, and then I will flip again my. Uh, like flip value such that now I should find move on and find out my next peak and so on for all the elements and now in the end what I've told you if the flip value is equal to zero which means that I should also incorporate the last element because this last element is also some peak value and this will only like this is only increase my total set and so like so I should also increase that and like add this total in my total value and just output out my total answer. I hope you get the point of the whole crux of this question and the solution in the code part itself if you still haven't watched me mentioned now thank you for watching this video i'll see you next one keep coding bye